In this video, I'm going to show you how I record my voiceovers. I'll break down all of the gear that I use as well as share some equipment that you can get if you're just starting out and using your phone. Then I'm going to share my entire process from writing to recording and how I edit my voiceovers to the videos. I'll also give you four tips on how to make things easier and save you time. And at the end, I'll share this amazing website that I found that can enhance this audio that you're hearing right now into this audio that you're hearing right now. That was the same soundbite. Crazy, right? So first let's talk about the equipment. I'll have links to all of this in the description. The mic that I use to record my voiceovers is this Shure MV7, and right now I have it mounted on this onstage desktop microphone stand. Attached to that is the Stedman pop filter that helps reduce and eliminate popping sounds that's caused from fast moving air out of my mouth portal. Here's an example without the pop screen. Peter pack a pick a pack a pick a peppers. And now here's an example with one. Peter pack a pick a pack a pick a peppers. I record the audio with this microphone by plugging it into my computer with a USB micro to USB-C cable. If you're using an iPhone, you'll need to get a USB micro to lightning cable for it to work. If you're just starting out and don't already own a mic that you can plug into your phone or computer, I would not recommend this to you. I bought this microphone to be my dedicated voiceover mic and it sits and it lives on my desk so that it's just there ready to use when it's time to record. In the past, I was using my camera shotgun mic, but I'd always need to stop editing, get out of my chair, go to my camera bag, grab the mic, bring it back to the computer, plug it in, change my audio settings, and then, you know, do all those things. It just created more friction in my production process. And because I have ADHD, I can easily get distracted with something else between leaving my desk and going to my camera bag. If you're just starting and don't own a mic, there are a ton of options for you to choose from, and I know it can get super overwhelming. I personally think the best microphone to invest in is something that you're able to use for multiple scenarios of video production not just voiceovers. Brands like Rode, DJI, and Godox make amazing wireless microphone systems that you can use to capture great sounding audio when you're filming and talking to your camera or phone. They can also be placed close to your food when preparing or cooking to capture amazing ASMR cooking sounds. And you can use them to record voiceovers as well. Wireless mic systems can be considered a bit expensive and they range between two and 350 bucks. Godox gave me this movie link mini for free to test out. And I just thought that they're gonna be going for 120 bucks, which I think is a pretty damn good deal if you were to ask me especially because it comes with two mics. So you have the ability to mic two people at once for great audio. Or you can wear one mic to capture audio of you while you're talking to the camera and place the other one close to your food to get great cooking sounds at the same time. And they're so small that you can literally hide it behind your ingredients. Pretty cool, huh? A different style microphone, but also a pretty affordable option is the Rode VideoMic Go version two. It's only hundred bucks. And I say this a lot, but I think this mic has a better pickup than their more expensive Rode NTG. And I just love that it's way smaller and it doesn't look crazy in my ZV-1 when I'm shooting any stuff out in the wild. And it doesn't take up as much space in my bag when I travel. There's a bunch of knockoff versions out there, but one thing that really makes this specific Rode microphone great is that it has a USB-C input. That means that you can use a USB cable to plug this mic into your computer or phone and record amazing sounding voiceovers. I'll have links to all of that and the specific cables that you'll need if you wanna do this and use your iPhone or Android device. This is easily one of my favorite mics and if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it a bunch in my behind the scenes content and stories that I share. So after writing this script, I tested this $55 Godox VD mic that they also gave me by plugging it into the headphone port of my MacBook Pro with the supplied TRRS cable and my computer recognized it as an external microphone and I was able to record voiceovers. So I wanna say that you can maybe use any mic as long as you use a TRRS cable, but don't quote me on that though. I only tested this mic and my MacBook Pro with the TRRS cable. I'll have a link to that cable in the description along with a longer one so you don't have to do your voiceovers like six inches away from your computer. So now if you're just using your phone and on a super budget, 
I would recommend this Power Device lav mic. It'll work for voiceovers and it comes with a super long cable so you can use it for when you're doing any on-camera talking stuff. The most affordable option is honestly just using the headset that comes with your phone. You'll see a lot of creators on Instagram and TikTok use this and they'll just hold the mic up to their mouth when they're talking. And the free option is to legit just talk right into the microphone itself on your phone. You'll also see a bunch of creators do this on TikTok as well. So here's my entire voice over process in a nutshell. And I'll show you how it's done on my computer. Then after I'll give you a phone example. So I'll film my whole video first, right? Then the very first thing that I'll do is I'll drop all of my clips into my editing program timeline. I'll do what's called a rough cut and I'll trim out all the stuff that I don't think I'll use. So on my timeline, what I'm left with is nothing but usable footage. Then I'll play that video back and write out my entire voiceover script. I got a whole other video on how to structure scripts and I'll put that in a link in the description. I also got a tip on short form scripting at the end of this video in the tip section. But I basically just type out what I'm going to say based on what I see in my video and what actually happened. I prefer to type it out compared to just recording and saying it off the cuff as it's happening because I'm not really good at just freestyling. And just when I write it out, I'm able to give a lot of information more clearly and in as few words as possible. Then I'll record my voiceover right inside of Adobe. Once my script is written, I'll keep it open and off to the side of my video project. In Adobe Premiere, you have the option to record voiceovers directly on the timeline. So what I'll do is I'll mute the audio of my video layer so it's not distracting me. Then on an empty video track, I'll hit the little microphone and then it'll count me down and it'll start recording. Then I'll just read my entire script in one go. If I mess up, I don't stop recording. I'll just stop talking for a second, then I'll repeat that last sentence that I messed up on, and then I'll continue with the rest of the script. Sometimes they'll even say the same line over and over again, just at different tones or pitches to see whatever sounds more natural. I'll try and be like more animated or whatever, so it just doesn't sound like a robot, but I just take my time and I'll go through my entire script. Once my voiceover is recorded, I'll then go through and edit my entire voiceover and I'll delete all of the mess ups and the parts that I don't want to use. And now what I'm left with is pretty much the voice or audio foundation of the video. The voiceover also gives me a pretty good idea on how long this video might run, give or take a minute or so. I'll lock that layer so it doesn't move and I don't actually delete anything. And then the next thing that I'll do is basically re-edit my video clips to fit and match up with my voiceover. So when I'm talking about what ingredients that I'm putting into my bowl, I'll match that up with shots of those ingredients with my voice naming each ingredient. There might be some moments where I cut to a shot of me talking to the camera. So I'll play that audio of that shot. Then I'll get right back into my voiceover and B-roll when I'm done talking to the camera. If I was editing on my phone, the process is pretty much exactly the same. I've been using this editing app called CapCut. And at the bottom, there's an option for audio. And after you select that, there's an option for voiceover. You just gotta tap on the mic and when you're ready, it'll start counting you down and then you just gotta read your script. If you mess up, just don't cut the audio recording. Just pause for a few seconds, then start back up at the last sentence you messed up on. You don't gotta reread the whole entire script from the beginning. This also makes it easier when you're editing the audio because you'll just see a big blank gap in the timeline. So you'll know where you picked up and nailed your line. And you can easily just make your cuts in the audio. Then select the part that you don't want, delete it, then adjust the clips so it sounds like one smooth flowing voiceover. CapCut also has a pretty solid desktop version of the app and I think it's way easier to use than editing on your tiny ass phone screen. You have the ability to record voiceovers as well and you can also get way more precise with your cuts. I got a few in-depth tutorials on my cooking creators course and I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. So here's the four tips for better voiceovers. Number one is that you don't want to sound like you're reading a script. I'm reading a script right now. So you want to write it like you're talking to a friend or explaining a process to them. Also, when you're reading, just like smile. <laughs> I notice when I smile, my voiceovers just sound happy and better and not like a boring robot. Tip number two is for short form vertical videos like TikToks or YouTube shorts. 
If you want your videos to be less than 60 seconds, your script should be 10 to 12 sentences long. I'll literally number 1 through 10, and then I'll type out one sentence next to that number. This is super helpful so you won't record a voiceover that is just way too long, and then spend a ton of time trying to cut it down to fit one minute, and possibly have to re-record some talking points again. Tip 3 is short form related too, but it's can the video loop. You might see some videos on TikTok that loop back into the beginning seamlessly, and you don't even realize you're watching the video again until you're like 10 seconds into the video. There are ways to write your script and edit your videos so that they seamlessly loop back into the beginning. I'll have to save this for another video on how to do this, but it's actually pretty easy. Tip number four is to try and avoid any other distracting noises or echo that your mic will pick up. You don't want to record your voiceovers in a big empty room where your voice can bounce all around. You'll get what's called reverb and what other people like to call echo in your audio. This might sound funny, but I think two of the easiest ways to avoid reverb is if you record your audio like straight up inside your closet with all your clothes. Or you can legit just throw a whole ass blanket over your head and microphone and do it that way as well. If you don't want to do all that, Adobe has this website where you can simply drag and drop your voiceover audio file and AI will analyze and enhance your voice. It does an amazing job of removing noise and reverb. I'll put a link to that in the description. I hope you found this video helpful and go check out my script video to help you with that. Smash the like button and maybe shoot me a super thanks on the way out. I'll catch you in the next one. Aloha.